Another glamorous task, which comes with part of this work, which is cutting out ash saplings from a hedge and treating them with SBK because they're taking over. I do this job for the grips and glamour and a high salary, or not. I wanted to talk about something that I've observed in the few years that I've worked for myself now. And I guess this is a video for anyone who is self-employed, doesn't have to be as a gardener, could be any trade. Um, see if you can reconcile with what I'm saying. Or maybe you're thinking about starting up as a gardener or any trade. And this will be something to um, look out for. It's all about you. And do you value yourself? Do you value what you do? Because if you don't value what you do, no bugger else is going to. No customer is going to pay you what you're worth if you don't feel you're worth it. I've got a couple of examples of where I've seen this recently. And I'm as guilty as this myself at times. So this is not me sort of trying to say that I've got it all sorted because far from it. I think if you work for yourself and you want to make a success of things, first thing is you've got to be good at what you do. And whatever it is you're going into, you've got to be good at it. And if you're not good at it and you don't deliver on the results, then you will get found out pretty quickly and you will fail. I've been harsh, that's just a reality. also see people who are really, really good at what they do, but still struggle. And quite often the reason they struggle is a mindset thing. So, examples. The examples I'm about to give, both of these people are seriously good at what they do. So this isn't, this, I'm in no way criticising their work or whatever. There was a guy I met the other day, and he's in his early 60s now, and wants to and needs to retire. And he works as a painter and decorator, and has done it on and off over his life. But his most recent stint at it, he's been in business for himself now, he's on his own, he's got no employees since 2005 and we were just, you know, um, chatting about stuff and he says to me that he's still charging the same daily rate, hourly rate or whatever now as he was in 2005. That's 12 years. And he's still charging the same rate. And when he was telling me there was, I don't know, there was almost, there was almost a kind of look of pride in his voice that he was proud that he hadn't put his prices up and he was still cheap. That's mental. Twelve years on, still charging the same thing. And then he went on to. Tell me about 
by his electrician mate. He charges hundreds of pounds a day and he was slagging his mate off because he charges so much. And you just think you're criticising someone for charging what they're worth. But you're not charging what you're worth. I don't know if I'm making sense. Another person I know, who I know this person very well, he's a carpenter. Seriously good at what, he's, what he does. He's been in business, he's worked for himself for 30 years. Again, never had employees, but has subbies and stuff. He's won awards from the Guild of Master Craftsmen. So seriously good at what he does. And we was chatting the other day. And um, he told me what he charges per day for his work. And I was like, well, that's what I charge. He goes, you what? You charge that much every day? I said, well, yeah. And this is a guy who charges the same amount as me, sometimes less per day. He's got he's got a workshop because he makes doors and windows and cabinets and stuff. He's got a workshop to fund and all thousands of pounds worth of kit that goes with that. All that outlay, which is part of his running costs. I mean I've got nowhere near that. And I know what I'm making a year after you take everything out. And he's charging the same as me. And again, he'd been charging that amount for years. And was sort of saying, oh, my customers won't pay more than that. No, that's a fair price. And it's like, how are you making money? And same as the other guy, he then went on to tell me about a plumber mate of his who charges significantly more per day and is always busy with work. But he was talking about his plumber mate as though the plumber was ripping off his customers for charging what he does. And it's like, he's not ripping them off, he just, he's good at what he does and he charges accordingly. But the mindset thing was, I don't value what I'm worth, therefore I've got to charge low. And I'll criticise those that are managing to charge higher and say that they're ripping people off. And I'm not having a go, I believe examples, this is not me running them down, because, you know, what the hell do I know? But it's just interesting to see that, that pattern of thinking. When someone doesn't value what they do. But then that can that can leave you with a sense that earning good money means that you're a bad person. Or earning good money means that you're ripping people off and that you should feel guilty for doing so. And I feel that sometimes. When I price work, I know that I've never ever gone into a job and thought I'm gonna rip this person off, ever. And you know, if I ever did that, then something's seriously wrong. But occasionally, you know, you price a job, it goes really well, and you make some good money off it. I feel guilty. I genuinely feel guilty that I've ripped this person off because I've made, you know, a couple of hundred quid on a job. It doesn't happen very often. But it's these crazy stories that you tell yourself which just hold you back. And I think if you can have an awareness that you do that, then you can work on trying to change it and do things differently. But 
if you don't sort of self-reflect and you have no awareness that you do that, you could do it for years and years and years and never progress. And it's just kind of sad, really. And it can work. It can work the other way around as well. Where you can get a customer who's got that mindset and they use it on you. And um, I've had that once and I'll, I'll never, I'll never forget it. It's so funny. Um, I think it was in my second year of business. And um, into this customer first time older couple and um, you know it was basically weed in their overgrown borders a bit of pruning a few other little tasks and I got I got my price mega roll and what I thought would take me a day took me two days it was horrible it was hot and the work was boring but saw it through as you have to do and at the end of it, um, the customer, she was very happy with the standard of work. And this was a price job, so it wasn't hourly rate. So she didn't know that the job had overrun and it had taken a lot longer than what I thought it had. So she thought, she had me there for two days and for the price I'd given her, she thought she found someone really good, but really cheap, right? And she was singing my praises. Oh, Simon, we're so glad we found you. We've been looking for a good gardener for years. You do such a good job. Please, will you come back in a few weeks and do some hedge cutting for us? Blah, blah, blah. So, fine. So, so I called up a couple of months later, wanted boundary hedge cut and they wanted their wisteria, summer prune. It's a couple of hours work and I quoted them £80, right? So, rocked up. Started doing the work, she's coming out, chatting away, happy as Larry. And I think I'd finished and packed up, and I think I was there for about three hours. Now someone's wheel spinning. Um, I've been there for about three hours, and um, packed up the tools, give her a knock on the door, and said, I'm all done now, Mrs. Smith, let's call her. And she said, oh, you're all done, are you? She goes to me, and I don't know what to say. She goes to me, and she was smiling. She goes, you've won, haven't you? I said, sorry? She said, you've won. I'm thinking, what if I won? Have I entered a competition here? What the hell does she mean? She said... You've just earned over £25 an hour. And I said, well, I gave you I gave you a price, so whether it took me five minutes or five hours, you, you would have paid the same. She said, yeah, I know. But when you work it out per hour, you've earned over £25 an hour. You've won. I said, right, I said it. Are you happy with what's been done? Are you happy with the standard of the work? She said, oh yeah, I'm very happy. And, you know, she she caught me off guard. I was not expecting that one. I'd never had that one before. So I said, well, you know, I gave you a price. You're happy with the standard of the work. What more do you want me to say? <laughs> and, um... She said, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Well, we'll, um, 
we'll see you in the autumn for some autumn pruning. I was like, all right, okay. So I went on my way. And needless to say, a couple of weeks before I was due to go back, which was a stupid move anyway, I should never have suggested I go back, get an email through, sorry, we found someone else. Uh, we won't be needing you this time. Thanks for all your help. But So linking back in, it's, it's just a, a mindset thing. Um, she did not value me as a gardener. She was happy with the standard of the work, but wasn't prepared because I because she perceived that I'd made good money on it, and it wasn't good money. It was okay because she perceived that I'd made good money. I must have been somehow ripping her off. Mental. So it works both ways, and that's about all I've got to say on the matter. Got a lot more hedge to do. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe if you like. Most people say that at the end of their videos, so I felt like I should say it as well. Thank you for watching.